Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I'm starting a little reading vlog where I'm reading all Spiffbo 9 books for Spiffbo. And Spiffbo is, if you don't know, self-published fantasy blog off, which is created by Marco Lawrence on this vlog, where 300 of the first people that come in gets to become, I was going to say, participants in Spiffbo and we have, I don't even remember how many teams, are, 10 teams, they get 30 books each. Each team pick a one final list, which means that there are 10 finalists. So we are now down to the final 10. The winner is announced in May. And I already read, I don't even know how many it was, 10, 8? I think it was 10 spiffle books for Cassidy, from course with Cassidy, because I was on her judging team. And we picked out a finalist. But last year, Cassidy did Cassidy's version of Spiffball, where we have 10 different reviewers, either bloggers or just reviewers in general, or booktubers, where we read through all the 10 finalists and had our own winner for fun, like not the official winner, but just for fun, to create more awareness for Spiffball, to make more reviews for the finalists, and to just judge because it's fun. Cassidy is an official judge this year, so she obviously is doing her own judging and has vlogs for it. But we did our own judging again with Mal for Mal's takeover from Cassidy's version. I just, this is all very confusing, I feel like. I feel like I'm not explaining it very well. But so we're still reading all 10 finalists. Oh, I'm reading nine because I did read, obviously, Cassidy's because the one I picked was the one who won, which is fun, which is fun. Or oh, I picked it together with them. We are the best, obviously. So I'm reading all the nine others, and obviously I need to make a vlog for it. I think I'm splitting it in two, because there's, in theory, five books in each vlog. I like to keep five to the number. So this is part one of reading all the finalists for Spiffball. This was a very confusing explanation, but I feel like maybe not all everyone knows what it is, etc. So I feel like I should explain. Basically, I'm reading all finalists for Spiffball, round nine, for Mel's takeover. That was the TLDR that you needed all the way in the beginning. Before I start reading the books I haven't read before, I need to nod out to Master of the Void, which is the finalist that Cassidy picked out, which is the one I read. And the author also did send me this gorgeous paperback copy. It is by Van Raven. And I feel like now it's been a really long time since I read it. I think I read it in, uh, was it June? Last year. And now we are in... Well, we're basically in March when you're watching this, I hope. That is almost a year, <laughs> so how to explain? I think, if I remember correctly, how to, like... I know what the book is about, just how to explain what it's about. We have these two characters, and we are in this world where everyone has magic, and one of our main characters doesn't have magic, which is, like, really weird <laughs> for him. So he goes out on this journey, I feel like, to look for magic. I don't know. Epic adventure of self-discovery. I mean, he goes out on this adventure thing. And then also this other character has magic and is going on a dark path. Because you have different point of views. I feel like I'm explaining the book very badly. <laughs> I feel like I do actually want to reread it because I did actually do it myself more than I thought I did at the time. And I am very excited for the sequel whenever that comes out need Van Ryman to write faster. And I thought it was very thoroughly enjoyable. While I was unsure if I would like really truly loved it, I don't think it's like a favorite of all time, but I think it is a solid read with a lot of entertainment. It definitely like, uh, we have like a character that grows from like a, um, I was gonna say, they are young and then like grow progression. Not necessarily progression fantasy, but like learning cure school stuff. And I thought that was really interesting. There was some elements in it that I didn't love, like age gap and a slave plots and uh, stuff like that that was a bit like hmm for me personally but I did thoroughly like think it was a solid read and I am excited to dive in. I actually don't know the score I gave this right now because we have our own scoreboard for Mel's Takeover. We'll put in maybe a photo here now or like have a in the end. I'm not sure how I will do this yet but I will like give you my final scores or like my progression at least in the end of this vlog and like in the end of the next vlog for all the results of how I end up and who is my winner. And then obviously there will be an official winner from all of us when everyone is done. I want to start a bit now on the box because I would love to read all now in March so that I can not think that I have to read them anymore because I've been putting it off. Honestly, a solid read. I think my star rating was like 3.5, but not the worst, honestly. 
And I am starting another one today, which is why I started this vlog. Because I was like, oh, wish I was starting this book, I'm starting this vlog. It's really because I have like a one day left of, of February where I would need to put in a book. And I have many different options of what I could put in. But I thought I would just do spitball. Even though there's definitely other things I need to read as well. But we're going to forget about those. And I'm starting one based on the page number alone. Because I needed a not long book to read. Where did it go? Cold West by Clayton Snyder. This one has all of 141 pages. It's a very short book. And I actually started it. I am already 5% in. Super long. But then I can actually tell you a bit what it was about because I don't know the synopsis or plot of any of these books here. I like to keep it as a surprise. And um, this one seems to follow some sort of like cowboy setup thing. It's giving me Red Dead Redemption vibes at once. And I'm a character that I don't think we know the name of yet. And if we did, I already forgot it because I read 5%. And he has now settled down with his wife. And he has two kids, two sons, I think. And has, like, settled down. He has a, like, tremendous past where he was, like, seems like a ranger kind of story shooter. What's it called? Wanted man, you know, in the Wild West when they drove around on their horses or whatever. Drove around. <laughs> rode their horses I don't even know how to say it sometimes and it seems like he put that past behind him after he got married and settled down in blah, blah, and etc but now his wife just died and I think a friend just showed up at his door and wants him to come out on maybe one last round of fun because he doesn't have a lot of money and he needs money to you know take care of his kids so his wife died of like coughing so we shall see how it goes it seems like he has like a past where he has done stuff I do you think we need some sort of fantasy elements in it though to count for spiffball? But so far, while was kind of set up for me, that's the impression I'm getting on the 5% I read. And I'm just see how much I like it. It's very short, so I wonder how much impact and stuff and I was gonna say war building, doesn't need war building, it can get in on a 141 page book. But we shall see. And that's what I got for you right now. I will leave you, let you know later tonight when I finish the book how it uh, went, and then hopefully I will actually get this vlog up semi-soon. See you soon. Okay, so yesterday I did finish Cold West, and it was not for me at all, I think. It was 141 pages, as I said, and truly the author tried to do way too many things in that short amount. Like, there were so many things going on. We never got to settle in and, like, what's it called? Digest anything that happened. Because, like, it really, like, like if sad things happened, we didn't get to digest it. If traumatizing things happened, which is granted also sad things, I didn't get to, like, even think about, like, this is terrible before we moved on and did something else. And I thought it was hard to follow. The magic in this is that I mean, character is one of the people who can open these portals to do stuff with. <laughs> but when every time he does, there's also monsters coming back from the other side. And then the church in this world is very much against that this is being used at all because it's an abomination, etc. So they've been after him for a long time. That is kind of like the magic, but it's very subtle. It's not like a like huge magic system that we spend a lot of time on. Still obviously interesting part, but there was like parts of the character that I feel like I cared really for in the beginning, like his motivations, and those were removed very fast and he never like looked back on them, I feel like. He does mourn his wife throughout the book a lot, but I feel like there should have been more, uh, I'm not going to say anything to spoil it, but there should have been more parts of the story where he also considered other parts of her life and it was not all. We got to introduce like new characters all the time that disappeared, died or disappeared or like he went a separate way and it, like all of this in 141 pages. So I didn't feel attached to anything that was happening on the page. And overall, I just, that made me feel, since I didn't feel attached to anything, bored in the end. It was written easily, at least. Like, the writing wasn't anything wrong with that, but it wasn't, like, incredible enough to carry the story. So I ended up, I have not put it in, in the score thing yet. And I feel like I'm just going to do this by the end of this vlog, because I'm also never going to update this. And I'll, like, give a final update in the end of, like, how the score is doing for the first five but I think star rating wise, I would be surprised if it's over a two star, honestly, because I did not enjoy myself that much. 
and I just as I said I didn't care for anything because of how things were written how things happened so yeah I'm sad to say not the favorite but I did read it and now we are probably going to go to the next one at the point but I need to read lots of other stuff between that so I will let you know obviously that's why you're watching this when I continue which is hopefully soon <laughs> I'm now gonna spend the next few days reading three more paper books so that I can post this vlog eventually and actually make some progress. I have decided for my next one to be... Where did my Kindle go? Sorry, it was underneath a lot of stuff. My next one is The Fall Is All There Is by... Let's see... C.M. Kaplan? Totally random. Like, I just literally opened my Kindle and like, that was the first one there. I have borrowed some on Kindle Unlimited, etc. To obviously support authors. And I am just going to read that now. I have no idea about the plot, obviously, because I haven't started it yet. So I'm going to let you know. I will read at least 200 today. I am debating just reading the whole thing, depending on how fast I read it. So I'll let you know how it goes when I have started it or finished it or however it goes. Let's go! Hello, hello. So I did finish The Fall of the Solaris. Not yesterday, but the day before. I was trying to give myself better light and it didn't work out. <laughs> this one follows a dude who was like part of the royal family. And then he has like kinda not been where I'm for, I don't remember if it was like four or seven years. And then he is now being summoned back again because there's gonna be a wedding. And he's like, oh, why, why do I have to go? And then like stuff happens on the road and stuff happens when he gets there. So like, look, like political stuff and family drama, etc. He's also gay. So it was a queer up. Love to see that always. But the book didn't really like match with me. I read a lot about like, there's like a certain kind of narration. We get like his every thought, etc. I don't really feel like that was the problem for me though. Know? Like I didn't mind our narrator and I didn't mind our main character. I just felt like everything blended together. There wasn't like a plot. <laughs> We were just like talking with people and then like stuff maybe happened and then it didn't happen and it was this weird bathroom almost sex scene that I was like what's going on right now it's really weird I feel like the story wasn't all for me I didn't really enjoy any parts of it except that we had a quite my character like I, I didn't see the point of the story I, di I didn't like like it just felt like a jumble mess for me. I wish I liked it more. I wish that I care for the characters more. Because, well, the cover's pretty. And, well, I want to like these books. It just doesn't happen right now, apparently. In a way, like, Cold West, for example, made more sense. At least, like, at least I had, like, a storyline in a way. Even though I felt like that also needed more. Because uh, it was so short and you barely got a glimpse of stuff. But, yeah. So, like, this, this, this was not short, but it didn't feel continuous and just yeah i was not having like the best time sadly <laughs> but again we'll share all the ratings final ratings in the end like form the spreadsheet and now i'm gonna start another one i'm reading the rick wire watch now i can't remember the name of the author i'm going to check i was going to read yesterday but then i had to read something else so I'm reading it today, which is by Jacqueline Hagen. So no idea what this is about, but also has a very pretty cover. And I'm excited to see if I enjoy this more. Yay, let's go. <clears throat> oh God, I haven't spoken today. So that was a dead voice. Yesterday I did finish the Wicked Warrior Watch. And... <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think how to describe it. It follows... This journalist? Am I completely wrong? No. Then this investigator slash journalist finds this object, aka the watch, that might have just killed someone. And then he is like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and so did I ask. He also meets this kid that is kind of helping him investigate into this, uh, let's say, group of people that people don't like slash don't trust. And then, like, it spurs this whole adventure thing, kind of. Almost humoristic at times in tone. I found that sometimes a bit cute. And then sometimes it was like, <laughs> I wanted it maybe to be more serious. But obviously I need to also just respect that this is the tone that the author wanted. 
there was this like <laughs> I don't know what to call it like parts in the story where one char character was forced to do a lot of things and I was like it hurt <laughs> I I'm struggling I feel like like the book was fine but also it didn't manage to hold my intention as much either at least it did like have a resemblance of plots but I felt like the characters blended a lot together even though they were supposed to be very different it didn't manage as I said keep my attention enough for me to like I feel like I'm just repeating the same sentence over and over in this vlog but for me to be like really invested in the story I feel like I said that sentence 14 times but the ending was very interesting because we still don't know a lot of things and it was this thing that happened in the end and I was like, what is this? And now I'm super curious about the sequel. Because that was a fascinating one to end. Almost like, I would say, a cliffhanger. Now I'm very cursed, as I said. So it wasn't terrible. Like, it, at least I felt like it hung together in a way. <laughs> well, like, I felt like, like the last one was very scattered. But it wasn't, like, amazing either. I feel like it was well written. But the tone of the story didn't match that well with me. And the characters were fine when I, like, got a better overview of them. The plot could have done some work, but it still managed to, like, have some fun parts, you know? So, obviously, I still wish we explored more. Oh, that was a shake. And, like, that they managed to bring out the stuff that I actually enjoyed more. Because, like, when it was not the beginning and it was not the end, I was quite bored. So because of that, I was like, ooh, snoozing a bit too good. I feel like I definitely like would rate this like higher than the last one at least, for example. But still not like having me totally, you know, you know? I actually haven't decided on a rating yet. I, th I thought it was really hard for me. So I know I'm starting another one. I just don't know which one yet. I think maybe I want to read Hills of Heather and Bone by K.E. Andrews has purple on the cover. It looks very sad. It's a beautiful cover, but it's like, it looks sad. It looks like we are like in a funeral. <laughs> so I do wonder, is it like a romance kind of thing? Or is that a mother and her son? I'm trying to like look at the cover. So I'm being curious about this one. I heard that it's written very beautifully. Let's see if I agree. And I'll let you know where we're soon. Hello! So yesterday I did finish Hills of Heather and Bone, which I am really enjoying, which I'm really happy about because I feel like I've been so negative in this video. But this one follows a married couple where the husband is a flesh weaver, which means he's a healer, and the wife is a bone weaver, which means that she can sort of resurrect the dead and like control them. And this power is like seen as like a nope. So she's been hunting her whole life and like you're not allowed to exist or etc. in this country they live in. And then now we're living a quiet life in this village for some time before they are discovered by this captain dude and it's being hunted. And most of the story is about them being on the run and trying to survive together. And I really, really enjoy the fact that these two characters had been together and like had this solid relationship. We do get some flashbacks to them like meeting and falling in love, but like most of it is told in like how they are now. And I feel like an established relationship like that is really rare in, I mean, I feel stories in general, and <laughs> not necessarily just the romance stories or fantasy stories, but in general, because it's usually about them meeting, about them falling in love. And I feel like, that is obviously okay it's obviously like that's how you care about this relationship because you care about them coming together but it's also possible to care about a relationship that is already established and that's why i felt like the author did really well here i did care deeply about these characters i wanted them to be together i wanted them to have their happy ending and i felt like this always very much interesting in the beginning when we were like on the road and like trying to survive etc it did lose my interest a bit like after a while because I just felt like, first of all, they were super lucky <laughs> for some reason. And second of all, I just felt like when we started, like, speaking in accents, I was just like, it put me off from the story a bit because I I, I, I don't know. There's just something about me reading accents sometimes. But it was just a lot of, like, convenience after a while that, like, I felt... I wish was done differently just because then made the story I would have cared for it more. 
But I still obviously cheer for them. I wanted them to have this happy ending, or if they would have one. And I felt like it exceeded some expectations in that because I feel like if you even have an established couple in fantasy, it's usually so that like one of them needs to go on a run story. And I feel like it exceeded that a bit, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that my character. I joined the the powers, and I really liked writing. I thought it was written really really well. The language was at sometimes very beautiful, and I enjoyed the story overall a lot. Um. It was just like, I wish, as I said, like, not so many stuff like happened by sheer luck and convenience for the plot, for me at least. But it was very enjoyable, which means that I read the first five books for this vlog. I mean, I didn't read the Monster Floyd in this vlog, but we are doing 5-5, five five, so that's how it is. So, which means that I should come with like some sort of ra ranking for now. I need to actually fix a little graphic for that, so I will do that now, and I will get back to you very soon of how it is standing right now, and then we will soon start the new vlog for this where hopefully I will see you there as well. And I am having a good time. I do like discovering new reads and different kinds of reads than in traditional publishing. I'm sorry if I seem super negative. I feel really bad. Very enjoyable read. I uh, very much recommend this one. Okay, I looked over the scoring for the books and I feel like <laughs> they were really low. I'm really sorry. So, as you can see, Hills of Heather and Bone got the highest with 10.8 and then we have Master of the Void with a 6. I feel like Master of the Void can change because after now reading a couple of others and you know obviously I read Master of the Void a long time ago and also like in comparison with other books again, I feel like Master of the Void can get higher comparing them like to Cold West. I feel like it's weird that Cold West has 5.2 and so it's so close to Master but at the same time I feel like Maybe it's correct. I feel like scoring like this is so weird. I usually do star ratings, but I feel like that would be inaccurate as well. And then obviously Require Watch goes to 4.6 and the Fall of Solar is got 4.2. So I feel like so far my impression is that the book this year is not as strong as last year, but that might just be me. I'm not saying that these books are by the way terrible, like the worst things I ever read. I read the worst for like the entry round for Smith for this year. But there's just lots of book stuff in these books that I feel don't match with me as well as last year. Which is obviously sad. This is obviously sad. But yeah, so this is the scoring for now. I'm still having a good time. Still finding it interesting to see other, I was going to say, focus and parts of these books that's maybe not normally in other books. And I just, I'm having a good time, okay? I swear. So yeah, I feel like that is how we'll wrap this up. This is the scoring. A part two of this vlog is coming very soon after this. Maybe like two, three videos or maybe right after, I'm not sure yet. So you should see the final scoring then. Again, I do feel like most of the way it can go up. I need to look over everything obviously one last time before like having my final scores in. And obviously check out the others, the others that was a sentence, reviews for Swift for 9 Miles Takeover. And then you shall see me soon in a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a little bone emoji down below if you enjoyed this. Four Hills of Heather and Bone. Heather? Heather? Is that how you say it? And you shall see me soon in a new one. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye!